Got ourselves in the boat here. Since I was having trouble charging them with the little hobby charger that I had, I'm gonna hook them up to the BMS and we're gonna charge with our solar system to get them up to full charge and then we'll be able to do a capacity test. And this is a little B uh, battery management system or BMS uh, rated for a thousand amp discharge, which, 100. or sorry, a <laughs> hundred amp discharge, which is way more than what we're gonna need it for. So we got our little balance lead. This is just to connect to this little ca capacity controller. This is just gonna allow us to see our voltages and our difference of our voltages for each cell. Basically you have your main negative here, the furthest away from, I mean, sometimes these are color coded differently, but if you're curious, your main negative is all the way on the left here. Then you have cell one beside it, cell two, cell three, and then cell four, which is also your main positive. Got the BMS kind of sort of mounted. Basically, what you want to do is you have a P negative and a B negative. The B negative goes to your main negative over here. And this becomes your negative of your battery and then you've got your positive over here. You also have bus bars from positive to negative, uh, and then from positive to negative, and then from positive to negative. And that makes a, a 12 volt battery. You wanna make sure not to do this, or you're gonna short out the battery, as you can see. So basically you go to here, and this one goes to here. Ooh, I like to put it this way, just cause there's little divots there. So the battery voltage is going to flow like this and that gives us our 12 volt. That, we also have our little leads. I made this little lead for our ca capacity controller and then this one is for our BMS. We're going to take negative of both so that's this white one and this one. And we're going to hook it up with this guy. The least uh, amount of power is going to go at the top and the most will go at the bottom. So I got this little gray one that's just going to the capacity controller. That's not going to be drawing any power. It's just checking the voltages. So that's on the top. Then I've got my balance lead. And then finally we have our B negative. And because these batteries are fairly cheap, uh, there's a lot of reviews saying that you really don't want to tighten down these bolts too much. So for now, I'm just going to hand tighten them with this little, little screw. And we'll get it all tight after the fact, once we're actually installing them and stuff. But I think it's only meant to be like something like 10 pounds of force on this. A mat, uh, I think if you put 8 newton pounds, or newton whatever it is called, see even right there, it's actually, I think it's bottoming out. So this isn't gonna work full time. We're going to have to replace these little bolts. Uh, it's recommended that you replace them with uh, little studs. So instead of it being a bolt that screws in, you just screw in this uh, longer piece of like threaded rod essentially, and then you can put nuts on it. And that, that will hopefully stop it from being unsafe as far as uh, stripping out these terminals. So I'm gonna hook up the rest of them. Basically, we've got our negative hooked up here. Then we have Right beside the negative is the first cell positive. So we're gonna grab that one, the next one over. And that one's gonna go over here. You also wanna be really careful with these bus bars that you don't accidentally slide it over and it touches this because then you're gonna short out one of your cells. So just make sure you're careful about everything you're doing. And like I said, I'm just snugging it, nothing too crazy. Normally I would tighten it quite a bit more, but I don't wanna strip it and for now it's just for testing purposes. So we got first cell complete with the sensing wire and the negative. Now the next cell over will be the next wire. And that's gonna go, all of these go to the positives. So this is going to, other than the one negative that goes to the main negative. So this one's going to the positive of cell number two. So yeah, these screws are terrible. I'll be honest, there's only a few threads when you actually have the bus, bus bars on. And when you don't have the bus bars on, they're too long. So I'm definitely gonna be replacing these, but for now, for testing purposes, it's going to work. I'm also gonna put the negative screw because there's nothing that goes on the negative of cell two. Getting on there. Okay, it's a little tight, so I'm just gonna loosen this to give myself a little bit of wiggle room here. There we go. 
There we go, hand tight. It's actually a very weak hand tight because as you can see, I'm not really using the right tool, but it'll work. Now you don't need this other sensing wire. This is just so I can keep an eye on the voltages and I'll know if there's if the cells are going out of balance because you don't want the cells to go too far out of balance and so normally you do what's called top balancing but the BMS also does some balancing as well but when you first get them you're meant to balance them so they're all the same voltage and you're good to go perfect so now the final cell and what's also going to be in the main positive we're going to do the same thing but I also need to hook up our charger and um, well any load but for now we're just going to hook up the charger so I got to hook up the solar so the solar positive is going to go here or any load is going to go here as well as this will be our negative so negative and positive for the entire battery so for now I'll just hook this in Lucy, Lucy Goosey. All right, so we got it all connected. I got just this temporary uh, positive wire coming off our positive terminal, and I want to make sure that the BMS is working. So you go to P negative, the black wire here on the BMS, and then to here, and it's coming up as one volt. But I have heard normally you have to activate these. So what I'm going to do is take the P negative and short it up against B negative. What? So. That answers no, all it's going to do is activate the BMS. You know what? I need to hook it up up the balance cable. I forgot to do that. So let's plug in the balance lead. So just jiggle that in. There we go. There we go. 13.2. Now, I don't know if I had now because I didn't have the balance. I don't know if I actually shorting it did did the job or if it was already activated. But if it's not working and you're not getting uh, any voltage, from your battery when you check from your positive to your negative of your BMS then you could try shorting out those two and it won't do anything just don't short it from there to your positive then you're gonna have problems um, so it looks like the BMS is working we have voltage across here so we have 13.18 according to this now I'm gonna also hook up this little guy so we can see what all the cells are doing so it's a little negative here the negative is all the way at the end and we just hook it up like that so 13.22 it's a little off from what this is reading but you know it's not that bad now i can go through each cell so we have 3.30 3.31 3.29 and 3.31 so it looks like everything's within reason i believe as well you can go to here and this is the difference between the highest voltage cell and the uh, lowest voltage cell. So, so what's reasonable? Well, I can't tell you for sure. <laughs> to be honest, it depends. But you don't want one cell to be super low and the other cell to be a lot higher. Uh, our, our cells, when I first got them, there was one cell that was about 0 0.05 off of the other cells. So it was a little bit off, um, but it works fine. Once you hook... Basically, if you have that problem, you can hook them all up in series, which means positive to positive, positive to positive, and positive to positive, blah, and all your negatives together. And that will just make this big, basically, um, it'll be like your cell, 3.3 is the voltage right now. It's not fully charged, but 3.3, it will basically make it so they all balance each other together. Now, you don't want to do that if you have a huge difference between cells. You, you might want to just take the one cell that's low and charge it up to closer to the range. So it looks like everything's working. Now we're going to hook it up to our solar and uh, try to charge it up. It's a bit cloudy today, so it might take a few days, but we'll, we'll get it going. And then we'll finally do a capacity test and make sure that we didn't get ripped off by these batteries. So we got it all hooked up and it's actually wired into our shore charger. I don't, it's not recommended to do that. And I don't do it just because we're doing it. But if you watch the voltages and you make sure to take it off, say at 90% and finish it off with either your solar or your tr your charger that's designed for a, a LifePo, you shouldn't have any problems. It's The problem you run into is it gets to full charge and then it tries to float it because it's trying to act like it's a lithium, uh, sorry, act like it's a lead acid or an AGM battery. And these batteries really do not like to be floated or topped off continuously. So when it gets to the 14.4 volts or, or in that range for the whole battery, you want to stop. And if we're talking about cells, you want to stop at uh, 3.6. 
So, I mean, we're putting in, in current right now, so these numbers are a little off, but it's saying we're at 87% on cell one, cell two, 88, 90 for cell three. So it's a little off, but it's not too bad. If I go to 3.8 millivolts uh, uh, difference between our largest cell, between cell three and cell four. So that's not too bad. Uh, it seems like the BMS is balancing things out okay. And before, when we actually fully charge it, we're gonna just make sure that we put it on a little hobby charger that I have to finish off the charge and make sure that it top balances properly and all the voltages of each shell is at the same voltage. But never leave a shore charger that's not designed for lithium on once it's fully charged or even close. Like I'm gonna take it off at like 90% uh, once all the batteries charge up to 90%, I'm going to do the rest with proper technology for lithium. Well, our battery is getting closer to fully charged. It's at 90%. The issue is um, the cells are out of balance, so we need to top balance them, which means bringing all of the cells to the same voltage. So the first cell is uh, at 80% at 3.35, 3.38 at 86%, cell number 2, 3.34 is cell number 3, and three, uh, cell number four is fully charged at 3.62, uh, or very close to fully charged anyway. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna disconnect the cell number four and just hook up the other three cells to the hobby charger and try to get them charged up with that. So a little bit of trial and error and a lot of beeping. Finally got the charge to go on the right setting. So we're actually, we're not uh, balanced charging them right now, but I'm just charging uh, across the two terminals. I know this looks bad because I've got negative and negative, but this is actually the positive over here. It's just easier to connect it here. So the power is going down the positive to this positive and there's nothing connected here. So this cell, which was the fully charged cell is out of the system now. And I've got the balance lead that used to be on this cell, the main positive over here on this one, which is also the positive for cell three. So that seems to be working. We're, we got six amps going in and I can monitor all the cells. I might even be able to balance it like this um, because I do have all the cells hooked up. Uh, it's just reading as if cell three and cell four are the exact same cell. So I should actually be able to put it in balance, but for now I'll just charge it up and I'll keep an eye on it. So we are done charging all the cells. We brought them all up to 3.6 volt. The top balancing finished up with only charging the cells that were a little lower. And now it's all good, so we've got it in this nice battery box. Just a little snug down. <laughs> 